Uh, but but get into the thing that you already talked about on the podcast. Oh, right. Yeah. Being like a female comic, I guess. Is and it, it, was? it was about, yeah. yeah. Oh, like lacking control, maybe? Mm -hmm. and definitely felt like, like I, a lot of this has come up. You know, I think even just like with some of the more famous male comic specials, I think, in the fall. And I'm particularly thinking of Burr's story or anecdote about getting flicked in the balls by another female comic and the anger he felt from it. Did you watch mm -hmm. that special? Well, he basically tells a story where he was like flicked in the balls. This after. is a Bill Burr special? Yeah. It's didn't like, I? It's the last one he put out, Paper Tiger? No. So he tells a story that happens when he gets off stage. He nags her by saying she's more of a personality, less of a comic. I mean, I can see through everything because I'm a comic and I know how I would nag somebody. But he's like, she's more of a personality. I know who the comic is. And so she goes like that, like follow that essentially. And then he, 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 the anger grew inside of, I'm summarizing, uh, to the point where he had to like meditate about it. He was so angry and he couldn't do anything about it because she's a woman, you know, and all this stuff. And I'm like, the irony here <laughs> is that you're describing what it's like to be a female comic. Yeah. And I'm not going boo hoo. I'm saying like, do you know how many times I felt that? And I just hung in and played cool and right. just kept going and showed up to the show. Like what? I'm going to protest. Um, I'm not going to perform at Fizz in Chicago, one of the best Wednesday night showcases, because I got my that, my ass max so hard it took my breath away. I'm going to take a stand. The way you say took my breath away, by the way, sounds like you liked it. No, no. It I, was know, like, I know, I yeah, know. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, he smacked my ass so hard, I fucking took my breath away. <laughs> <laughs> it was like so fucking hard. It was mm. like brutal to the yeah. point where it was like, <gasps> like, I can't even describe it. With Another comedian? Yeah. yeah. He put his Instagram handle up here. Yeah, put his Instagram handle. Um, but again, it's like... And even, I, I, I don't, I don't want to quote someone wrong, but it's the idea of, like, female comics sort of, like, just, I feel like if I had, like, what, reported that, like, A to who, and then B, I'm, like, what, annoying and sensitive and uncool? I mean, you could go through, you could walk through all the scenarios. I'm alive. I am fine. I kept going. I didn't really say anything. I mean, to his face right then, I said, don't do that again. That hurt. Right. You know, I wasn't like, oh, thank you for having me, <laughs> you know, but I didn't not, I didn't not do that show anymore because I would have only hurt me. Right. So what does Bill do in that situation? He um, says, he I'm trying to think of the end of his story. He, oh, you mean like in with that woman? Yeah. I'm saying like, the version of you getting your ass slapped well, so just, hard that it took your breath away. Yeah. And you, you were thinking about him for years. Yeah. Uh, but you, you can't protest, fizz. Sure. You just say, don't do that anymore, guy. And I have no power at the time, especially. I'm just coming up. Bill, in that situation. Very powerful and s done by someone very powerful. What, what do you think he, his action should be? I get why he talked about it. I'm talking about this. Yeah. Like, I get that it was frustrating for him. I just think the irony of that one little thing happening to him. I'm not saying it didn't hurt. I'm not saying he shouldn't be angry. I'm not saying it was appropriate, you know, to, to have that done to him. It's just sort of like, yeah, welcome to the club. Is it ironic because you feel he doesn't realize that's I don't think he realizes that that's what so many... And I also think that he would... Now, this is me speculating. Would shit on me if I was like, I'm going to do a take a stand against whatever that was that happened. Right. Because if I had taken a stand, maybe I wouldn't be where I am right now because I would have fucking quit. Mm. Right. I would have been like, comedy's bad and it's not a safe space. And then I just wouldn't be where I am. So it's like, are you proud of me, daddy? <laughs> that I endured some bullshit and made it through and like didn't complain well, I don't enough? understand that. You're proud of me, daddy. Who, oh, that who was, was just a weird expression. <laughs> Is that an expression? Yeah, no, that's that he's like comedy daddy. Oh, Bill. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was I like, feel like Mark Maron is me. comedy daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but he wouldn't I, I don't know him well enough to know how he would feel about the situation. But just along the lines of like I didn't complain and I kept going. Like it's interesting that he's complaining about it. Because I don't think that he would but I'm again speculating. Yeah. I, yeah. My yeah. But also on a micro level, not men versus women, mm -mm. not, not uh, 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 just me. Yeah. Just me or just Bill. If, if all this stuff never happened, if mm -hmm. women all had hairy armpits and uh, were, you know, all that were CEOs and men had little balls and couldn't dunk. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that it's still. I want to move there. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. The irony, I guess, aside, but sure. the truth still mm -hmm. there. The irony meaning, like, let's say Bill 
recognize that's how women feel. And the bit was about, and now I realize this is how women... It doesn't change the fact that he did feel whatever that feeling is, taken advantage of, uh, bullied. I mean, angry. But the, the anger is a symptom of a, of a feeling, of a trigger. Sure. And I, we can't, speaking of not speculating, um, check out our sponsor. And we're back. Bill, you don't know why he's angry. Also, people, people search for feelings when they're performers, mm -hmm. where his shtick, in a good way, is anger. Yes. So how could I, you know, how could I find the funny? And then once you have your voice, how could I find the anger? How could I find the empathy? How could mm -hmm. I find the blank, blank, blank? So his, that anger could, for somebody else, could have very much been sadness or frustration or turn them on. Yeah. So anybody, if a, if a, if a woman flicks my balls or if I slap a girl's tit sure. and you take away the what's taboo at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> slap a tit. Yeah, because if slapping a tit in 92, I'm on Letterman, baby. Absolutely. But slapping a tit now, what am I doing, Fallon? <laughs> so, you know, what what do you do? What what does one do? Remove the, I can't, you said I can't protest because I may have been threatened, bullied, whatever I don't, it is. I don't think you can remove our status. In a hypothetical world, uh -huh. I'm saying. Well, okay. In a hypothetical world, you're just basically saying, don't treat each other. In a hypothetical world where none of that exists and it's just a slap and a flick. Uh, I'm not talking about the oppressor. I'm talking about the oppressed. I'm talking about a hypothetical world where you say you can't remove status. Where here's how you can remove it or flip it. Bill. Yeah. Now here's Bill where he's the man. Where they're the, the in this ironic context, the oppressor. What, can, what should Bill do? Just take it and say, because that's what you had to do? Or does he say, you can't do that? I think, yeah. He, maybe he even did. Maybe he even just said, fuck you. Is my... I feel like my question isn't clear. Yeah. I'm not giving you what you want. But I don't know what you want. What I want to know is, what, what, do, what do we all do? Not treat each other like objects. But I, I can't <laughs> control you. I could control right. me. Sure. So I would never do that when I'm having sex with a girl. When I was single, Betty, I love you. You're the most beautiful girl I've ever been with. I love you too, Betty. When I'm having sex with a girl who, uh, incidentally, I said this on a podcast yesterday, is enjoying herself. Okay. I don't. I, don't, I, I think maybe, like I'm never, I, I'm never believing it. So I'm not the type of person that's going to be like, you like that, don't you? Even when they're saying I'm coming, I say, don't worry about it. Just, you know, let's just have some, do some bits. I don't believe it when I feel it. And I don't even know if I'm really feeling it. Yeah. Oh, you know, you know oh, she's coming. So I can't put myself in the position of somebody who's slapping a tit. Sure. But what, what do we, what do you and I do with this platform of this podcast that is guaranteed to get millions of views, I'm guessing over under is 50 is uh, 8,000 in the first week on YouTube. And then, you know, or maybe the same on iTunes. Uh, let's see. Tell your friends, get it higher. But those people that are listening, when they're watching and they see whether they're a comedian or they're uh, uh, an audience member and they see the next Beth Stelling like that'll ever happen <laughs> get slapped in the ass okay and she stands up for herself yeah. and she says hey you fucking cunt <laughs> D don't you do that what does now this guy or girl or guys or girls or people okay what do they now do do they stand behind you yeah i think they go hey i mean again all hypothetical say some other comics that i'm still friends with that were at that show saw it and i, I don't recall anybody ignoring it and not helping me it was just a private moment in the back of the room while I'm waiting to go up. So I guess to answer, it would just be like, hey, we saw that. Don't do that again. If we see you do it again, you're not going to be welcome here. Simple. So it's just letting them know that we saw it. Yeah, it's not cool. Don't, don't touch people's bodies. Is don't this, invade their personal space. Is this an issue for you now being at a level where you're uh, like... I don't want to say you weren't a real comedian before, sure, but you sure. know what I mean. Whatever, like, a full-time comic. Yeah. Is it a concern for me now, like, happening to me? Yeah. 
Mm, I would say, I'm just trying to think of any scenarios. No. Has this, uh, has the Me Too movement and subsequently just the social awareness of uh, uh, acceptance of men and women, yeah. relatively speaking, around the, uh, in our bubble at least. Treating each other not as objects. Yeah, and like calling attention to the, this is not okay. Yeah. Uh, has that, have you noticed a change in the comedy world? For definitely. Better. Yeah, I think I've, there's definitely been some positive changes. I think just more awareness. I think over the years we were already heading towards like try not to have just one woman, one woman on the show, mm -hmm. not just one person of color on the show. I think there were steps that were being taken towards that before even the Me Too movement that was shining a light on particular instances. But um, I thought of something and then I just lost it. Oh, it's created, I would say, um, if you're... It's created some very awkward moments with unfunny people and comedy adjacent Gotta people. Gotta give me examples. Um, say I'm doing radio with a host. I'm on the road in a city. Say it's San Francisco. San and I'm, Francisco. I'm doing uh, radio to promote my shows at the Punchline. And I have I got, a feeling it is San Francisco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I've done this radio show before and I have an affinity for that person. We have a nice rapport. And it's close to the Me Too movement, uh, breaking the stories. And uh, I go and... We hug each other. Hey, good morning. You know, I haven't seen you in a year because you usually mm -hmm. once a year. And he's like, yeah, I don't know. Can we hug? I don't want to get me too. And again, I'm not a humorless cunt, but you're not skilled. Good name for your special, by the way. Yeah. I'm not a humorless cunt. HBO Max, <laughs> August 20th. Um, I'm, yeah, but it's like, but you're not skilled enough to make that topic funny. I am. And so I'm going to do that. And I'm not even saying that pompously. I'm saying... If it were funny, I would have laughed. It's not that I can't find humor in it. In fact, this goes back, and I've said this example before, um, I was watching Richard Pryor's, you know, special live in um, Long Beach. It's on Netflix right now, 1979. That's what? 20, I also have a DVD. Yeah. 41 years ago or something. Brilliant special. He is making jokes, one in particular about rape, which is a big controversy. Rape jokes. Can we tell him? Can we not tell him? It's like, okay, well, that was 40 years ago. And absolutely passes it's a funny joke he's relating it to animals like getting hooked on each other and wouldn't it be nice if women's pussies could latch onto a dick that's raping them and be like hey you're coming with me you know eh, don't move you know wouldn't that be great and he is telling that joke and it's funny mm -hmm. and we laugh because it's not from the perspective of a rapist right i think sometimes when jokes aren't funny it's because they're from the perspective of a rapist yeah i think that's i don't know if that's a hard rule but I, I don't think it's a hard rule fair. either. It, I just it's a think, good sheet to like maybe try and shift the... Just where are you coming from? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. What, what is your intention? Why are you choosing to talk about that? Like just that, to me, that's base level stuff. But I think if you're skilled, make it funny. I've had people make... Yeah, so I guess that was my example was the radio But what one. was the awkward moment? Did you call him out? Oh, I just said... Um, I mean, how many said, things are happening I behind know. us right now? They found out I was out here. They found out I climbed. Yeah. They sent a crew to save me. I'm like a little kitten in a tree. Anyway, oh, I responded and I said, um, as long as you don't rape me, we're good. <laughs> uh -huh. And then I hugged him. So that was awkward, do you think, because he felt called out? I don't think he felt called out. It wasn't like a slam dunk in his face. But you were just I'm not just even saying that my humor back was tantamount. I'm saying... You make a bad joke and well, I'll respond. I yeah. mean, it just to me, like, that's what's changed is unskilled people throwing their shit into the wind, like even on Twitter or something. Like, um, sometimes I feel like there are certain comedy fans on Twitter that they feel like, like, like sexual harassment is roasting. Do you know what I mean? It's like they're just unskilled in it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's like being shocking without a punchline. Yeah, it's just like, what are you doing here? I, so I think yeah. positive changes have made. I, I have, I'm trying to think of counterparts. Lots of the discussions turn to, well, can you not date anybody at work anymore? Going back to me dating comics or whatever it is. It's like, I'm sure there's rules in place in certain outside of comedy industries that that absolutely still stands and is probably a good rule to not mix interpersonal relationships at work. But with stand-ups, it's just like, it is a different world. And I can think of someone- Because we're freelancers. Yes. And, um, and I can think of someone in particular right now, a comic who has asked me out and I turned them down. And I still think of them very fondly because they handle it like a normal you person. You turn them down because they're a comedian or because you're not interested? I wasn't interested. Right. 
And what made you bring that up? You're just saying I'm thinking like it's absolutely possible to shoot your shot, not be called out and canceled right. for trying to fuck a coworker. Right. It's like no, he asked me out. And I was like, no, I'm flattered, but no thanks. And he said, no problem. I've done his show since. I mean, it was years ago. Mm-hmm. We're fine. Yeah. Because he's a freaking adult. The idea of people like, oh, I'm not allowed to say that. It's like, well, it's just not good. Yeah, and it's a choice. It's just like, could you make a better choice? The the um, this is a this is coming from a mindset of me as a comedian looking at other comedians who don't believe everything they say is coming from a place of hate and and understand that I may not know their intention for better or worse mm-hmm. gi- giving the benefit of the doubt yeah so this isn't this isn't condoning hate or racism by any means but being honest when I see a comedian make a racist joke my instinct isn't that guy's an evil guy it's just that guy's a bad writer and maybe he's hateful and maybe his he's like sad that he can't piss his mom off anymore because he doesn't live at home with her. Sure. So he needs to he needs to get that feeling. He needs to get a, a feel right. He needs a, to that feeling. The feeling. So from that perspective and that awareness, I when I watch somebody tell a, a, a Jew joke that 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 uh, is an anti-Semitic, mm-hmm. I am I don't know if I could I can I don't know if I could say I've never been offended at least as an adult. I'm sure I have and I don't remember. Mm-hmm. I'm not somebody who gets offended much. Okay. I see that and the closest I could com- say about offense is like they're a hack is worse than they're a racist. Mm-hmm. Like you... That wasn't original. That wasn't... What do you do? I'm half, I'm half, you know, this and I'm half that so, you know, I fucking, my dick, fucking, <laughs> fucking bitch. You know, it's like, uh, you know, I don't care that you called it, you know, a Jew or, you know, it's not for me to say I don't care about the black stuff, but, you know, like, I'm not, you just don't, you're bad. So I, I, I am more offended by hacks and thieves and people who are, let's say you see that person on stage and, and by the way, I'm going to step away for a second. I'm going to have to do the thing that I do yeah. and edit this out if we need to. Yeah. If you need to yawn, yeah. you could yawn. No, I think if anything, maybe like sometimes my, my vision could be better. So maybe I was like... Let me do an impression. Okay. All right. Tell me if you could tell. I'm, yeah. I'm listening to you, right? Yeah, you... I would start sort of the bitch. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like your nostrils a little... Your, That's interesting. Your mouth was closed when it didn't need to... Be. Yeah, 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 yeah. Interesting that I made that. Maybe I did and I didn't register it. You know... We'll cut back. I... It was something about hack versus like you know it's not what you're saying it's that you're you're a bad writer okay and so when you're watching a comedian on stage and there's somebody ordering a drink and they go or going to the bathroom and saying like what the fuck you know whatever it is or you want to shut the fuck up you know i'm trying to do whatever and then you think oh you you don't need to say that but then you see them two three four more times and you realize oh this is a device that they use because they're 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 fishing and you realize oh this is not negligence as far as, you know, being able to not be distracted. This is you playing an aggressive character. I see. And it's not working. Yeah. So then it's like, oh, he's not mean necessarily. He just didn't That's write a, any material. Yeah, you're, you're, you're bad at this. Uh-huh. So when you see somebody who's bad at something, it's like... You know, do you use Bill Burr as an, as an example again? I remember watching him in the OR when he was, I don't know what special he was working out, but he was doing a joke about Christianity okay. and how people are so, people who are Jesus and God and Christian and this is real and they firmly believe this, but have judgment about Scientology. Um, and he said his reason, I don't remember exactly what it was, but there's two things. There was, there was, one, it's been around for so long that people are like, yeah, this is, we all known about this. But this one has been around since like the 70s or the whatever. And the guy's name's Frank. What's his name? Who came up with it? I know. I, I know what, it's like bit, a, I know you, the bit you're talking about. Yeah. And the, it was so cool to watch this. You know, as a comedian, and it's harder now when we've been around for a while and our role models are our peers, some of them, to like see behind the curtain and like watch somebody who could do something you can't do, um, that you want to do. And I remember watching him make the audience uncomfortable in a way that is my skill set, but then had them all eating from his hand. 
not because they weren't Christian anymore, not because they agreed with him, but they understood his point of view and gave him enough trust to like, I see your point. Uh-huh. Now I'm free to laugh. Point I'm making is th- him saying that religion is bullshit, not that that's what he was saying, but you know, subtext could bother a lot of people, but he found a way to make it funny. Sure. So he's not bad or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then you have somebody else go up there and say, oh, you believe in Jesus? Oh, do you believe in the tooth fairy? You gay Jewish black woman bitch? So it's not, whatever. yeah, it's not skilled. It's not thought out. It's not. And and then they're like, I feel a lot of the hate on uh, on stage comes from panic comes from not knowing what to do so leaning into the shock and that's why i don't i don't weigh it as hate just i see what you mean uh yeah anyway i don't remember what that relates to necessarily but uh i i I, I am sensitive to hack oh yeah (laughs)